Uh, in this video, we're going to add to our forecast the uh, period cost elements. And uh, here we're going to take a little bit different tact. Uh, I know that period costs you typically in a business think of as a fixed amount. Um, obviously, they're not 100% fixed. They, you would expect them to go up, for example, with inflation and so forth. Um, but the key is, is that they're not going to vary month to month. They're going to vary based on sort of the capacity, if you will, your, your um, people that you need in management roles, the space that you have, um, the equipment that you need, um, you know, advertising budgets and so forth. Um, additionally, when you're setting up a business, period costs you really think of in terms of we're budgeting for some fixed amount of period cost. And you try and stay within that. So you size the business to kind of make that work. And if you can't make that work, then uh, you can't have the business. Um, so one of the common ways that, that you approach that, it's what's called a percent of sales approach, but you don't take the direct sales. You take the sales for say the first full year uh, of sales that you have. So we're gonna go grab that number and put it up here as just a reference, okay? And then what you do is you start thinking in terms of that amount as that my indirect labor, as an example, is some percentage of that. Um, in the restaurant business, if you were to go do internet research, you would find that a common percentage of that is about 10%. And so we're going to put that in there. Um, occupancy. Occupancy is a tricky thing for a business, depending on whether or not you're building, building the, the uh, building or you're buying the land in the building or you're renting it. Um, you know, that is, that is effectively a choice between having um, this, this cost show up as a, um, as a recurring cost or basically having it show up someplace else in terms of, um, you know, needing to make payments on, uh, on a building. Now, right now, we're just going to assume for purposes of this, um, um, thing that we're going to buy the building. Um, so we're going to say excluding land and building. And you'll see how that shows up here in a minute. We're just going to assume that um, since we're going to want to put something in next to campus and um, you know I, I don't know what's available there, we may have to build something from scratch just you know from really real work over a building whatever else. We're going to go ahead with this most extreme assumption right now, which is that we're going to buy the land in the building. And so because of that, our um, period costs really, you know, for occupancy, really come down to things like um, utilities and um, maybe uh, um, some repairs of the building occasionally. Um, property taxes still actually go in on the other side with the, with the land in the building. Um, but that's, so, so, you know, not nearly as much. And so you might think in terms of percentages on that, or you might think in terms of, you know, sort of initially think in terms of amounts. And so on a monthly basis, you might say, you know, a, a, an amount that would probably cover all of that is, um, let's just say $5,000. Well, you know, if, if I did this and said, what is 5,000? divided by our times, you know, 5,000 would be um, one month. So we got to do it times 12 and then divide that by, you know, the total sales that we have. It comes out to this really low percent, all right? Um, about 3%. So we could just put in 3% as our assumption here. Um, equipment repairs and maintenance. Um, a, Little bit different situation there, but not a lot. Um, you know what you're thinking in terms of is um, that you're gonna you're separately gonna buy all of this equipment. That's gonna happen someplace else. That doesn't happen here, and so it becomes how much a month should you allow for repair and replacement? And a lot of times that becomes a similar percentage. And again, I think if you were to um, go out and research that, you would find that it's it tends to be a relatively similar percentage. When I say research some of these things, what you can do is actually go pull down 
the uh, financial statements for say a restaurant chain and you can look at some of these elements and see what they are as a percentage of the um, overall sales and then you can just start to plug that in that's one way to do it now i like putting another pad in here just for miscellaneous uh, not everybody does that but i like having that and so that's going to be five percent of sales and you can see that even though we have these as um, periodic costs they are actually going to be per, they're still based on percent sales they just don't vary month to month they're based on sort of a, a, a peak sales if you will so we're going to take for the first little bit and we're just going to say that it's equal to whatever the percentages are times the um, the year two sales all right and since that's a formula we don't have to do anything with it um, and in this case because we're still dealing with months we're going to have to divide that by 12 and like I said before I'm going to um, get rid of the decimals I'm going to uh, use the same formatting that we have above hopefully so that that works out nicely uh, and so what I've got uh, if you if you want to think about it what I have is the percentage times the annual divided by 12 okay and if I drag that down it doesn't work and so why did it not work it didn't work because I needed to lock in this annual amount as well um, so if I do that everything seems to work a little bit better there we go all right and we can continue that on out all the way out to year two now I did something you guys will do this too I'm just gonna warn you in advance you're gonna do this too um, what I did was I've started this way too far over all right so I can drag it back that's okay um, and so we'll get that all the way out we're gonna extend that out to month 12 and actually um, now when we go into year two we're gonna get the same amount because we're still basing it on that but we don't need to have the divide by 12 here because we're gonna get a total number right and also I'm gonna go ahead and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually start linking it to the live sales going out and so that's gonna cause each of these costs to grow based on um, uh, inflation over time and we want that to happen so that's good so in order for that to happen I can't have it linked to a number way the heck back over here I've got to have it linked to P something uh, and so I'm going to take that away and have it linked to my sales in year two and I want to keep the row 28 the same so that I can copy this formula down so I'm going to do that okay and let's see if I carry this over to year three the numbers should get just a little bit bigger and they do right so that's starting to make sense and I would expect that these numbers are about 12 times these numbers which they are so that makes sense and so I can just carry all that out to year 10 now Okay, so now I've got a uh, forecast of period costs out to year 10. Now, I've got to do the same thing as I did before, and I've got to make a decision here uh, about um, how much of that period cost I'm going to incur in the months before I open. And I'm going to make an assumption based on experience. Um, all of these costs, I mean, you have to have the building. You're going to start occurring some of these costs. Um, right away when you're starting to set stuff up and I'm just going to make a general assumption that we're going to need three times whatever that is um, so equals three times whatever these costs are uh, you're going to need that at startup basically just on the basis that um, um, you're going to need about three months while you know of, of having all your managers there for training they got to get paid all that sort of stuff 
you're going to have to pay for the utilities and everything else. You're, you, you technically will be getting equipment in, so um, you maybe aren't paying so much for the repair and replacement there. Um, you'll have a little bit of breakage, um, but you know you you can uh, uh, better safe than sorry. I would say on that right now, and then miscellaneous again. There are all sorts of things that happen over those three months. When you add all of that up, that's a sizable amount of money. If you look down in the sum, that's $105,000 that you need to come up with over that three months for opening costs. Um, but keep in mind that about half of that is is that you're paying the people, you got to pay some people for the opening. Um, and, you know, it's probably not unrealistic that you're going to have two or three folks you're going to need to pay. So I'm going to leave it in at that right now. Again, remember that the goal, the overall goal here with the forecasting is to try and develop something that's objective. Sort of the first step of this is, is that we're really starting out by just trying to get all the math to work. Uh, and then at some point we may, and I'll go ahead and highlight these in gray so it's something that's sort of quasi assumption here. Um, and maybe I'll just put a three here. Let's do that. I haven't done that before, but we'll give that a try, okay? So by putting a three here and tying all of this equals that number, um, that sort of explicitly helps us think about does it really take three months or not? Maybe that'll help me. But what I was going to say is is that you know the bottom line is is that you're going to start out kind of wiring this all together in the spreadsheet. And then when you see the result, um, you may say, well, you know, maybe we were a little too conservative on this, a little too aggressive on that. That process will come later in terms of sort of tweaking your, your assumptions. Um, but right now you just need a set of assumptions in order to get started. And so that's kind of the key. All right. I don't know why we were formatted that way, but we're going to go ahead and do that. Now we just need to sum all this stuff up to get our period costs. And drag that thing to the right. Okay, we're not doing too terribly bad there. Uh, and now we want to get what I would call our operating uh, margin. Before tax, maybe would be the best way to describe this. Before tax um, operating, we'll just call it operating cash flows. All right, because quite frankly, other because we don't include financing charges in this analysis, is explicit line items that come in another way. Um, there's not any any other um, cash costs going to come in. Uh, other than taxes, quite frankly, at this point. Um, and so we can we can um, um, simply get like a before tax OCF here and then we will we will uh, translate it to an after tax in the next step. So let's uh, just borrow this formatting, use a little paintbrush up here. All right, and so we now have the before tax. And that is simply equal to whatever the gross margin is minus the period costs. Got it? So clearly we got this 159,000 right up front. That's not good news. Um, here we make almost nothing in the first month open. Again, some of this not terribly surprising simply because, um, first of all, our variable costs. I mean, our revenues are quite low. They're they're starting out. We're assuming they're starting out low and they're growing, um, and we've got these fixed costs that are really, you know, for the first year, those fixed costs are really the cost of getting the business up to scale, and so don't be freaked out if you have some negative months during your first year. As a matter of fact, if you don't, I'm probably in a lot of cases going to be scratching my head and thinking um, you haven't really thought about this carefully. Uh, but bottom line is, is that for us, those are our, uh, 
um, before tax operating cash flows. Now, it doesn't include the investment amount yet. It doesn't include a terminal value yet. All that we'll talk about. Uh, and it doesn't include the tax adjustments yet. But, but you're getting, at this point, very, very close uh, to knowing, you know, what the cash flows from your business will be. So good job on that. Again, if you have any questions on this, um, this is absolutely something that we're going to be, um, you know, I'm happy to talk about in class because this will be different from um, business idea to business idea. So please just let me know. All right. Thanks.